Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. I'm Derek Shore. Courtney has the day off, but Lisa Helfman, Senior Director of Public Affairs with HEB, is in town. It's great to see you. Great to see you, Derek. And Lisa, I see you out in the community all the time. I swear you have one of the best jobs. We're going to catch up with you in just a moment, but you chose a really good day to come in. I'm excited. You did. You did. Coming up on today's show, how about this? Bravo's Top Chef Season 19. It's coming to an end tonight and a local talent that woman right there chef evelyn garcia she could be crowned the winner she'll join us live to dish about the big surprises in store for the grand finale plus got a sweet tooth five ways you can cut back on the sugar while still enjoying your favorite desserts that looks delicious and we are honoring queen elizabeth the second's 70th year on the throne with a texas-sized celebration down at herman park and Joe Sam is standing by with a blast from the past. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys, that's right. We're catching up with the iconic TV mom, Joe Marie Payton, who played Harriet on the hit series and one of my favorite shows, Family Matters. She'll share more details about her reprised role as Sugar Mama on the animated series, The Proud Family. But for now, back to you guys. Oh, my goodness. What a treat. She has such a legendary voice. Absolutely. Were you a Family Matters fan? it a little bit. TGIF, musty yeah. TV on a Friday night. Okay, so before we get into all of that, how about a check of today's forecast? Franklin, how's it going? Um, it's all, all around not a bad day. We've gotten a little bit of rain. I don't know. Did you see a shower? Maybe. Oh, yeah. I got caught in it did on you? the way in. You did? Oh, yeah, yeah. The freeway was stopped. It was a downpour. Oh, my really? gosh. Well, that's what we've seen. These just really heavy downpours around. But unfortunately, most of us uh, or a lot of us are not getting much rain out of the deal. Here's a look outside. You can see a pretty sunny sky with temperatures right there in the upper 80s and the low 90s. And still, just like yesterday, feels like numbers in the upper 90s down in Pearland and Conroe, 91, 79 in Huntsville. That tells you something in Huntsville. At least a shower is going on up there. And there's still a chance through 7 o'clock that you'll see at least a 20%. I think most of the action is going to be at the coast where we're seeing it right now. That's the front, and that's meeting the sea breeze. So you get those two different winds out of the northwest uh, and out of the south, and that's why we have a better chance of rain there at the coast. So that's what we're going to continue to focus on. So chances of rain are still with us tomorrow, and maybe something on Saturday. We'll talk about that and your weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, Frank, sounds good. Good. We'll see you in just a bit. Okay, so back here at the desk with Lisa Helfman. The last time we really hung out was during our Olympics watch party, which we hosted, KPRC hosted, down at Discovery Green last summer. And uh, since then, a few changes have happened in your life. You got a puppy. I got a puppy, Nola. Nola, but you're also engaged? Engaged. Congratulations. Round of applause for Lisa. Okay, so who is he? How did he ask? Tell us the story. Well, his name is Lee Haverman, and he's a New Yorker, but I have made him, that's him, I have made him into an Astros fan. Oh, good, so okay. all hope is not lost in the world. That's a prerequisite, right? Yes, 100%. We got a, a lot a lot to cheer for. And look at you together. So this must be post-engagement because the puppy was there. Yes, and that's us may making him into an Astros fan, but we're back there in Central Park taking a run. Um, we travel a lot. That's us in New Orleans. And you were telling me, Lisa, so this was actually a setup. Uh, it happened to work out. Uh, last time you were set up, it didn't work out so well. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> so <laughs> but what this made was you a good one. take the chance on a setup? I would be nervous about a setup scenario. A lot of pressure, huh? Yeah, but I was like, well, it's one hour out of my life. I should just go. But apparently he was like, nope, nope, I'm not going. But eventually he was convinced. Wow, okay, okay. Well, congratulations. Do you have a date yet? We don't. We're thinking next spring in Mexico City because we both love it there. And I studied there at the end of Tulane and just fell in love. And then I introduced Lee and he fell in love with it too. So it's so sophisticated, great food, great culture. It's just, it's a great town. Mexico City is, it's phenomenal. And it's super close to Houston. It's like an hour and a half by plane. So uh, you're a hometown girl. You left to go to Tulane for college. You ended up going to law school. Tell us how you ended up at HEB, because I swear you have one of the most interesting jobs. Your job is essentially to make everybody happy. I am the HEB joy spreader. Um, but, you know, I went to law school, practiced in a big firm, moved to Texas Children's Hospital as their lawyer. And when I was there, I came up with this nonprofit, Brighter Bites. I met Scott McClellan, HEB guy. Yeah. He was like, 
two years later, after helping me build the nonprofit, he's like, why don't you just come work for us? But you know what? It was April Fool's Day, no joke, and okay. I thought he was kidding. Because I was like, well, what do I know about the grocery business? He's like, you know real estate, we'll teach you the business, you're clearly passionate about food, and here I am eight years later. It's super cool, and of course Scott McClelland uh, has announced that he is stepping down from HEB. Uh, we will miss him, he's been so great, uh, such a great partner in the community. Let's talk a little bit about Brighter Bites though, because this is something that Lisa started this organization 10 years ago, and today it's grown, you have 95 employees, you're in nine cities around uh, the country, and the goal is essentially to get fresh produce more fresh produce into the hands and mouths of young people. Absolutely. So we're creating communities of health through fresh food and we're sending home 50 servings of produce a week with these families in underserved neighborhoods through their schools. Look at those kids how excited they are. About and this produce. is critical <laughs> because adorable? so many young people they, they don't have access to produce. It's something many of us take for granted but training young people from a young age that food comes in its own package and not a plastic bag is... And by the way it tastes good. Like that's the thing people don't even know because they've not even tried it. They've never been exposed to it. A child told me in the pilot years ago that it was like the favorite thing in the bag was oranges. Why? He'd never had them before. Oh in my Houston, gosh. Texas, fourth largest city in the country. Isn't that crazy? Wow. And now we've sent out 50 million pounds of produce to over 500,000 people across the country. And it's totally free. And it's totally free. It's so phenomenal. I mean, I, I find it fascinating. You do so many different things. And in your role at HEB, uh, part, of the ways, part of the way that you put smiles on people's faces is by uplifting the community. Um, HEB has really stepped up after the Uvalde shooting last week. Yeah, you know, it was really personal to us. I don't know if you heard, but we lost one of our own partners, um, a store manager for us. His wife died, was one of the teachers, and then two days later he had a heart attack, Joe Garcia. Yeah. So the whole thing, obviously we want to step up when the community needs us at any time, but this was um, really personal to us. So we put our disaster relief team in our mobile kitchen and we served over 8,000 meals to first responders, hospitals, and everybody else down there that just needed a warm meal and a helping hand. And that's really one of the cornerstones at HEB because obviously HEB exists because the community, we know and we love you, we shop there, but it's not lost on HEB that y'all are there to give back to the community when they need it most. You know, sometimes we just like to say we're a people business that happens to sell groceries. Mm, that's the perfect way to put it. Let's talk about um, a program that's really important to you, the HEB Mental Health Champion Scholarship. Where did this all come from and what's the goal for that? You know, during the pandemic, I just knew we needed to step up because mental health issues became so much more vivid. In People our are isolated right? at home, yeah. They are lonely, suicide rates were going up amongst students. so. We stepped up and we partnered with the A Leaf School District and we showered them with a bunch of nonprofits to help them and also created this mental health champion scholarship. And each student, a, a junior, got to pick a program at each school and we gave them $1,000. And then we gave four, um, we gave four thousand dollars to the school to implement their idea. And yesterday we had a meeting, and one of the counselors said, "Our student said before she wasn't going to college, and when she got that scholarship, she's like, you know what? College is for me. All because we recognized her." Wow, Lisa. So it's truly life changing, life changing work. You just never know if you do the right thing things seem to work out. You do the right thing. Well, listen, we're so glad to have you. Um, you're such a gem in our community. You do so much to help underserved populations. I know you just had lunch with Brandon yesterday yes. and his organization. So thanks for all your work. And we're going to have a bit of fun I'm on excited. today's Houston. I'm ready. Life. Okay. And your hair is really working. Thank you. It's a good hair day. Okay. Still hair. to come on Houston Life. It's grad week. Have you heard? And the mastermind behind this spectacular line of cosmetics on your screen. Well, guess what, people? She is a local 7 17 year old woman. She is sharing the story of how she made it all happen. Plus, she made it to the finale, y'all. All right. Evelyn Garcia is here to chat about her incredible journey on Top Chef season 19 and give us a sneak peek of tonight's epic conclusion. Houston Life will be right back. Houston Life. It's time for our H-Town sit down. Yeah, let's meet today's guest. Chef Evelyn Garcia is a native Houstonian with parents from Mexico and El Salvador. She jump-started her culinary career in New York City before returning home to Texas to create Kin HTX, 
offering pop-ups, catering, special events, and products with a Southeast Asian flair. And for the past few months, she's been on the national stage, competing on Bravo's hit competition cooking show, Top Chef. She's made it all the way to the finals, and on tonight's season finale, the winner will be crowned. But first, Evelyn Garcia is once again stopping by Houston Life. Evelyn Garcia, come on out to Studio B. There she is. <laughs> so good to see you. Hi. Thank you Very so much nice. for making time for us. And of listen, course. I can't believe it's been, what, nearly three months since the season premiere. You stopped by Houston Life. You couldn't really tell us much back then. Nope. <laughs> but here we are at the finale. How are you feeling? Are the nerves still? No, Jittery? it feels the same. <laughs> it feels the same. Um, I mean, obviously, I've had time to like process everything. So, I'm. I think mostly, I just feel so grateful. Like it's just nuts that like it's happening to me, and that it's happening to me in my city. I think that's just amazing. I, I couldn't have asked for a better season, right? <laughs> to participate. <I> mean. <laughs> And you know, it's so great how you just were so pro Houston and so happy about your city and pumping us up in every episode. And of course, I'm sad that there we're even in Tucson for any episodes, but no, you had a great experience then too. Yes, no, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you've seen the show, the finale's always somewhere else. Um, but Tucson, I had personally never been there. I've I actually had it planned for my birthday the year we shut down and everything. Um, so I had to cancel all my plans. So it was nice that I went, but also had no idea it was going to be via Top Chef, right? Right. It's and the so people, interesting. Yeah, yeah, the people you met there. Oh my God, yeah, these legendary I mean, chefs. Everybody's just so talented. And also, you felt that same warmth that you did in Houston. Like, they're just so proud and excited that, like, it's such a huge platform. I think, like, I think even personally, I still haven't, like you can like fathom how big this really is. And also for Tucson, like they were just so excited to really show off their city and there's just so much going on there as well. And their food's amazing. Well, okay, let's get back to Houston. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's great to see Houston on the national stage. When you came back uh, last time, Evelyn, the show was just premiering. What has been the feedback now that it's been on the air for months and months? Because although you've been part of this food scene for a long time, a lot of people are just learning about you now. Yeah, I mean, from the instant it started airing, I mean, the constant messaging of like, we can't wait to go to Houston, we can't wait. Obviously, they're excited to try my food, but they're like, the chefs that were part of it, the the areas of town that you've never even seen. And I think when I was here a while ago as well, in the beginning was like, I was excited to see Houston in a different light. And, and I learned so much about my own city just participating. But Houston does have such cultural diversity and you are amazing about talking about your background and your culture and your family's restaurant and everything like that. That was really inspiring to see. I mean, I'm a huge fan girl. I should probably <laughs> tell that. I've been telling that to Derek, like this is the perfect episode for me to come on because I get to meet you. I watch every Thank week you. with my son who's 17 years old. Go Drew. Yeah. And um, tonight we're having a viewing party because we just respect you and everything you've been able to do. It's Thank just, you. That's I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Girls, really, we cry here too. We <laughs> do have a little clip of tonight's episode. So I have yes. not seen this yet. Lisa has not seen it. This is an exclusive clip. What are we about to see? It's a little bit. So we were, you know, part of the finale is actually getting a meal cooked by not only the judges, but the guest judges. So it was just mind blowing to be able to just step back a little bit and enjoy a meal with the judges, ah. which we really don't get to hang out as much. They okay. Just, we, just, they, we just get judged. Well, let's watch <laughs> just a little bit of this. Audrey, here's your piece right here that you requested. Thank you. The judges are like cooking us a feast. So surreal to just be here in this moment. I'm like, pinch me. <laughs> I feel like it doesn't set in. You know, like Pat is sitting right next to me, y'all. <laughs> Everything I had to live through to be here is totally worth it. I mean, I'm just really happy for this experience. And to exhale, right? Yeah. It's all coming to an end. Hey, before we let you go, where can our fellow Houstonians see you out in the community? Yeah, so uh, currently I'm a pop-up in events. So we're all over town. So definitely on Instagram, uh, KinHCX, um, all over that, or Chef Evelyn Garcia on Instagram. And then um, this Sunday, we definitely have an event with I'll Have What She's Having, which is a rock and roll 
picnic, which we were really excited to be part of. And then next week, we're dropping the dates for our upcoming um, tasting menu as well. And then the restaurant's coming hopefully this fall. So you're not busy at all, is no. what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Evelyn Garcia, we yeah. love you. We're so proud Good luck of you. Tonight. Thank you so much. I'm static. <laughs> We've been rooting for you every step of the way. Don't forget, you can watch Top Chef, the season finale, tonight at 7 p.m. on Bravo. You two have got to get a photo. Uh, for <laughs> sure. Okay, when we come back, how a local 17-year-old went from making slime to having her own line of cosmetics. We're highlighting her inspiring story in our grad week. There she is right there. We're gonna have a chat with her. And later, Lauren Kelly is live at a party at Herman Park celebrating the Queen's Jubilee, the 70th year on the throne. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. Welcome back to Houston Life. All week long, we are shining the spotlight on some incredible 2022 grads. Today, you're in for a treat. We're introducing you to a local entrepreneur who started selling homemade lip gloss in 2018, and today, her brand has expanded into skincare, apparel, and accessories. And she's only 17. That's Were you right. doing that at 17? No. I mean, <laughs> her name is Aaliyah Arnold, CEO of Boss Up Cosmetics. She's here with makeup artist Alondra Diaz and model Valerie Hernandez. Her journey to entrepreneurship. Welcome, ladies. It's great Hi. to see you. Okay, we're going to meet your uh, makeup artist and your model in just a moment. But, okay, you were making slime yes. as a young girl. How did that yes. evolve into creating makeup? So, when I was 11, I had a slime business called Slime Queen Slays. Crazy name. She has the best uh, names. <laughs> the best. And then, um, when I was 13, I decided to quit a little bit. I kind of grew out of the interest, and I decided to sell lip gloss. And we're seeing videos right now of the slime. Yeah days. Um, I hope <laughs> you still spend a little time making this line. Yeah. But you were posting videos online. Yes. Is that how things started? And now lip gloss. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. my God. How'd you even learn to make that? A lot of research, you know. I honestly don't know myself. It just came out. I, it's, I don't know how it happened. But yeah, there I am. It's crazy. A look at that. Okay, oh, yeah. so Incredible. 14 years old, that's when the lip gloss that's thing when this started, happened. Yeah. And now it's evolved. I mean, you've got your oh, packaging, yeah. all of this. Started with glosses, and now we have highlighters, blushes, lashes, skincare. We do apparel as well, keychains. Um, yeah, do a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a beautiful. lot. And Thank you have you. the most interesting names Thank of you. your products. Self-made, yes, hustle. So my brand is based around entrepreneurship and bossing up. So I really wanted all my products to reflect that. So all my names have to do with so like the eyeshadow names, Entrepreneur Success. Uh, this gloss is called Self-Made. All the names I have to like do with entrepreneurship. Okay, and uh, let's get a shot of your model and your makeup artist yeah. over here. So right now she's using our blushes. Oh, I'm sorry, she's using our lip glosses in this uh, shade Success. We're applying it. Our glosses are our best-selling product right now. They are what everyone's buying right now. I hear lip gloss is very popular. Yes. Um, I don't currently. <laughs> it's very wear important. I know. I need to get some. So all of this is happening though while you're going to school. Yeah. Explain your schooling scenario. It's a little atypical from yeah, a lot of young very. students. So I do online school. Um, so my parents are very big around school comes first. So I always do school first, do my assignments, do any testing, and then after I do the business. And it kind of just does that. My business kind of evolves around school. So yeah, it's crazy that I'm going to graduate. Like I'm not going to have school. It's crazy. I don't know what it's like to run a business without doing school. Has it been hard to balance? Very. It's yeah. a lot of behind the scenes struggles, but I mean, the outcome is amazing. It's beautiful. Thank you. So. I heard that TikTok was yes. really powerful for your business. Can you yeah. tell us what happened there? So I kind of blew up on TikTok because my mom came to help me with the business. It kind of blew up. And yeah, we're almost to a million followers. We're okay. at 800K. Oh, so yeah, fingers crossed God. we get there. That's incredible. And Aaliyah, yeah. what's your goal with this business? I mean, you want to be like a big cosmetics <laughs> yeah, company. Yeah, my day. ultimate long-term goal is to be in stores like Sephora and Ulta. That's oh. like my big long-term goal. I would love to get there. Yeah. You're going to do it. Thank you. Why not? <laughs> this is amazing. Yes. You Super. will do it. Well, thank Aaliyah, you. thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and your products, I mean, this They're is beautiful. legit. They are totally professional. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again to uh, our model, Valerie and Alondra, our makeup <laughs> artist. Y'all look very, very nice.
thanks for stopping by. Leah, great to meet you. Thank you so much. Keep Jeez, us posted. Don't too. forget about us when oh, you I are won't. in Sephora and no, Ulta. Not yeah. at all. <laughs> okay. I'm going to need that all the years to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. In the meantime, if you would like more information on Aaliyah and her cosmetic brand, you can visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right. We're going to shift gears now. Queen Elizabeth II is the first British royal to serve for 70 years, incredible. And Great Britain is throwing a four day nationwide party celebrating her. The celebrations kicked off this morning. And check out this flyover video. The queen and the family are on the balcony. That's four year old Prince Louis with big brothers, uh, big brother George, big sister Charlotte. So watch him. This is what happens during that beautiful flyover. Apparently, uh, it was a little loud for them. And so he covered his ears a bit. I don't know if we have a shot of that, but it's a super cute moment. Uh, to me, it looks like a meme in the making. He's like, no, mom, I'm not having it. <laughs> okay. Well, he's not covering his ears, but at some point he did. I <laughs> promise. He really did. I saw the clip too. Lauren Kelly is live at Herman Park this afternoon for Houston's own Jubilee, hosted by the British Consulate General Houston. Hey, Lauren. Hey guys, I saw that video. He definitely did cover his ears. And this is super cool, y'all. I know that we're not quite over the pond, but right here in Houston, we are celebrating the queen and all of her glory, her majesty here with a bunch of our friends from across the pond. And what to make a party better than the bagpipes? What's your name? Nick Hudson. And Nick, what's your friend's name here? I'm um, Luke Egan. Where are you guys from? Where do you play bagpipes at? So we're in Houston. We're at the St. Thomas Episcopal School. So I teach there and Luke just finished eighth grade there. Now, Luke, let me tell you, let me add, you guys were playing a little bit earlier. We caught a glimpse of it. What's the importance of having bag, uh, bagpipes at a celebration like this? Uh, it's to honor the queen and the UK. So that's why the bagpipes Absolutely. are important. I love that you're instilling the traditional music of the bagpipes and they're so wonderful. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of music, we can't have a, a British celebration without this guy right here. I think he looks a lot like Paul McCartney. Come on over. <laughs> this is so cool. The Fab Five, if you've never seen them before, which I love you guys. I saw you on a cruise ship back in the day, and now you're sure. here. I've seen them a few times as well. <laughs> you're going to take the stage and give the, yes. the people here, the patrons here, a little bit of what they want to see. A little bit of British rock and roll from the 1960s, celebrating the Queen's Jubilee, Platinum. If I were to ask you what is the Queen's favorite song, what would that I would say Her Majesty on the Abbey Road Okay, album. that makes exactly. sense. Well, thank you so much, thank you. and thanks for stopping and by and chatting with us. Life rocks. Yes, they do. We've got lots more from this celebration, you guys. We're at Herman Park at Lot Hall, and we're going to be speaking with some more people inside. They just wrapped up their swearing, which is really, really cool. Lots of people to chat with, lots of fascinators to see, and, of course, a lot more from here at Herman Park uh, a little bit later on in the show. But for now, back to you guys inside of Studio B. We were just saying it looks so fancy out there. Lauren. So fancy. We need to go out there I know. after what? the show. Oh, let's go. So fancy. We'll be there. Yes. Houston Life Rocks. You did hear it from Sounds that gentleman good. there. Okay, Lauren. Thank you. Still ahead, let them eat cake. How to cut back on the sugar in some of your favorite desserts. Allegedly, <laughs> they still taste good. We're going to find out. Now let's check in with Joe Sam, who's catching up with a popular TV mom. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. Joe Marie Payton from the hit show Family Matters is back in the animated series The Proud Family, another one of my favorites. What she has to say about her return to the show as Sugar Mama when Houston Life returns. Welcome back to Houston Life. Derek Shore here along with Lisa Helfman from HEB. How are you, how you doing? You having fun so far? I'm having a blast. Okay. You're the best. Oh, honestly. you're the best. No. You're the best. Courtney does have the day off. Well deserved. So calling all KPRC2 insiders, we want to hear from you as always. This time the question, who has the best burger in Houston? We have teamed up with Carbock Brewing Company for this month's Viewer Choice Bracket Challenge. So just go online and nominate your favorite spot today. You can nominate once every single hour through June 9th at clicktohouston.com. Voting will happen in the next round and the winner will be featured right here on Houston Life. And remember, it is totally free to join our KPRC2 Insider program. With all the great uh, choices in Houston, that's gonna be some stiff competition right there. Okay, what do you say we check in with Keith and Frank for a look at what they have coming up on KPRC2 News at four o'clock. Hi guys. Yeah, hey. boy, th that's gonna be a lot of work and, uh, and it's making me hungry too. So yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to come up with, job, with the place. It? There's so many, can it be a chain? I wonder like because there's some some chain places that have some good burgers I, it could literally be anywhere as far as i know okay. anywhere anything like what what do you want to say there's something you want to say i can tell muya what's your favorite muya muya burgers 
They'll know it. Yes. Oh, oh so so maybe it's not as chainy as I thought. Where is it, Keith? Uh, uh, they so there there was one in Katy uh, out kind of where I live, but there's like two in the Houston area. They have one in College Station, uh -oh. but yeah, Muya M O O Y A H. I love Muya burgers. Oh my gosh, and the fries are mm. good too. So good. that they probably would get my vote. Yeah. Well, you should get online. Uh, click to Houston.com, Keith. That's Every the website. Hour. I think you I'm gonna nominate it. it. <laughs> Every hour, yes. We, it, conspiracy, uh, we can get Muya to win. <laughs> I'm a Five Guys. I, I love Five Guys too. See, yeah, that's five that's a close good. number two. Okay. Yeah. Then. Okay then. Well, wow. they can't say anything because you know, it's their vote. It's their. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So let, we're going to go eat after this, as a matter of <laughs> fact. We'll, we'll reveal our picks later on in the show. How about that? Okay. We need okay. time to think about our yeah. our top picks. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Sounds Fair good. Enough. In the meantime, yeah. well, you know, uh, do we want uh, burgers out in the rain? Because some of us dig us some showers. A, a quick shower here and there. Most of it's at the coast right now. You can see it's quiet across Houston. Temperatures 89, 92. Down in Galveston right now, it's 92. But watch out for some showers to be moving in your direction. Uh, Huntsville still at 7. 79 because of some rain cool there. We still have these chances 20 30 percent through about sundown. So seven eight o'clock things really begin to wind down and temperatures will stay on the warm side. There's what we have right now. That's why I say Galveston itself. The downtown area may just be seeing clouds and maybe a sprinkle. But you go down to the west end, some showers and thunderstorms coming through Lake Jackson Bay City up toward Trinity Bay. Been seeing some showers move through. Looks like Beach City. These showers along the lake also, but they're continuing to move off to the uh, east. So not seeing those really coming our way. The future guest wants to continue to keep something in here through 8 o'clock. That's why I have 20, 30 percent, but they're going to be just isolated sea breeze showers, I think is going to be about it. We do have another chance on Friday. There's some action out in West Texas along this old front that might translate to a shower here, but again, only about 20%. By the way, speaking of Friday, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, the Sabercats are, this is their last game, but they're in the championships this year. Uh, that's at uh, Aviva Stadium at 8 o'clock, 87, 84, 80 degrees. Should be really a pretty nice one. It's Pride Night down uh, out there, by the way, for that. In the meantime, 90, 92, 94 on Sunday as we head into the weekend. It's hot and steamy. Just a quick one on this. Still a 90% chance that this system just off of Cancun would develop into maybe a tropical depression, tropical storm heading toward Florida. It gets there Saturday and drops as much as eight inches of rain. We'll talk more about that at four o'clock. Okay, we'll see you in a bit, Frank. Thank you, sir. Look now at some of the stories that we're working on this afternoon. We're following a developing story from North Harris County where a man has died after an apparent road rage shooting. Coming up at four, we are live with an update. Why investigators say there are two different scenes tied to the shooting? Drowning is a Can't leading cause of death for those on the autism spectrum. We will take a look at a new approach to help kids with autism learn how to swim. And here's something you don't see every day, a mountain lion. Yeah, take a look inside a classroom, how the cub was able to sneak inside and what it took to finally get it out of there. Yeah, thank goodness it was only a cub. And I hope maybe mama was looking for it too. So that, that had to be a hairy situation. Uh, that, well, that's a big cub. <laughs> Do you see what I did there? That looked oh, yeah. like a big cub. I don't know if that was a, is that actually a cub. Well, I guess we'll find out at four. I mean, class pets have gotten a little larger since <laughs> I was a student. <laughs> we had a hamster in mine. Yeah, yeah. Just a uh, little baby. Durable in mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. We'll see you at four o'clock. Vote for that burger place, Keith. All right, we'll do. <laughs> okay, remember TGIF growing up? This was like the Friday night must watch TV. Remember this? Domino's Pizza with TJ. Yeah, right. All of it. Step yeah. by step. Perfect strangers. Family matters with Steve Urkel. Of course. Steve Urkel's neighbor on the show was Harriet Winslow. Uh huh. Her real life name is Joe Marie Payton. And if you wondered what she's up to since Family Matters, Joe Sam can tell us. I sure can, guys. You know, these days, she's a little bit more animated. She's starring in the reboot of The Proud Family, the animated series that's been on air for two decades. It follows teenager Penny Proud, her family and friends as they navigate throughout life. Jo Marie Payton plays the role of Sugar Mama, Penny's, Penny's grandmother, and tells me this reboot is one the whole family can enjoy. Well, what was on your daddy's side, boy? My good looks. <laughs> yeah, it skipped you and went straight to my Bobby. Joe Marie Payton, or should I say Sugar Mama, Sugar Mama, Sugar Mama. Hi, and thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Joe. She's a mother, grandmother, wife, and veteran actress. Jo Marie Payton is known for her work in the iconic series Family Matters, playing Harriet Winslow, and became a household name with roles on Perfect Strangers, Will and Grace, Moesha, and The Proud Family, for which earned her three NAACP Image and NAMIC Vision Award nominations. How does it feel playing the matriarch of The Prouds in this hit animated Disney series? 
oh my God, it feels great, Joe. It feels great. But it feels like we, I never left because everybody came back. Everybody was available. Everybody sounded the same. So it was easy to just jump back into that rhythm. It was like the family got back together, you know, and when, when, it's, when it's family like that, you know, it's easy to just gravitate to each other and just get that big old hug and, and just take care of business. And that's what we did. Absolutely. Now, the show made its debut back in 2001 on Disney and is still going strong with this new 2022 installation. Why is it so louder and prouder? I think it's just incredible. And then on top of that, I love the music. It keeps it up to date and it's, it, it, it allows us to to uh, to express, you know, the fact that we are we, we're here. We're watching you. We see you. We, we, we're relating to you with the music that the kids are listening to today. As a matter of fact, it's making even the adults, the parents, listen a little closer and say, you know what, that song wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> you know, I'm paying attention to that song. I see why they liked it. That's right, and people really love this show because it does show the ups and downs of what a family goes through, and it can relate to anyone from any different background. And, and, to, and to just know that that's, that's part of the fun of life and the, the core of, of what makes you powerful is your family. Your family mm -hmm. and your friends. Joe Marie Payton, Sugar Mama, thank you so much for taking the time and speak with us today. It was such an honor and a pleasure. We wish you nothing but more success. And we want to remember to keep it loud and keep it proud. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you. Now, The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, is streaming right now on Disney+. Plus. We'll have more information on how you can check it out on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Wow, okay, hearing the sound of her voice <laughs> brought back all kinds of memories. She has one of the most uh, distinguishable mm -hmm. voices out there. It is beautiful, and she had me cracking up throughout <laughs> the whole interview because she is just that funny, and her personality never changed. That's awesome. She mm -hmm. looks the same. I don't even know if distinguishable <laughs> is a, a word, but you recognize that voice immediately, mm -hmm. right? Okay, thanks, Joe. No problem. That was fun. Fun little catch-up. All right, what do you say we check in with uh, Lauren Kelly, who's at a celebration fit for a queen today? Day. Lauren, how's it going out there? Oh, you know, celebrating the Queen is easy, especially when they pull up in my ride. You can't have a British celebration without an Aston Martin DBS. I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick spin, but more from inside this party when Houston Life returns. Well, the Queen's Jubilee celebration for 70 years on the throne has begun. And you might not think that we have a way to celebrate it here in Houston, but you are wrong because we are here at Herman Park and we are celebrating with some of the most fanciest people in town who almost are royalty themselves. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us today, Richard. Well, it's wonderful to have you here and it's wonderful to celebrate this incredibly British occasion with our Houston friends. Now, for people who are a little bit confused as to what we're celebrating, why is this is such a, a monumental occasion to celebrate. Well, Her Majesty is the first monarch in history to reign for 70 years. So the Platinum Jubilee is a celebration of that. It's also a celebration of how she has been the rock of our country. She's been the consistency. She's been the foundation for 70 years of difficulty, of joy, of tragedy, everything that comes with longevity. The Queen has been, been there for us. So this is a celebration and we have a huge turnout today to have fun with us too. Absolutely. Your wife, Jackie is here. Now, we can't not mention the Fascinators. I think that you guys might laugh at our obsession with the Fascinators, but everybody has to have one. Absolutely. It's such a joy to have a Fascinator, something that says, I'm so happy to be here. Absolutely. Just another great way to celebrate the Queen. And you guys have some fun events later on. You've got the Fab Five. We're just going to be toasting the Queen the rest of the evening. Absolutely. We have some games outside for the children. We have Punch and Judy, which is a very traditional, ancient British uh, children's entertainment show. We, we, have, we just have lots of fun. We have the Great British Bake Off competition. We have the Daughters of the British Empire producing fantastic British pastries. And, I, and earlier on, I, I swore in four new British citizens as well. That's we wonderful. 
football. We had the, we had the children from the British International School singing the national anthems, the British and the American, and we're going to toast Her Majesty properly a little well, later. Let's, let's toast her right now on Houston Life. Cheers to Your Majesty. We celebrate majesty Your honor decree. and yes. 70 years on the throne. What a wonderful accomplishment. Thank you for having Cheers. us. Cheers. Back to you guys. Very, very nice. Uh, we're sort of missing out with no champagne. It almost looks like the queen is there in person right over their shoulders, doesn't it? She's just watching <laughs> over the right festivities. <laughs> just watching. All right, Lauren. Thank you. A lot of fun. So fun. I wish we were there. I know. We should go. Next year. Next year. <laughs> there won't be another one. I know. Sure, that's okay. Coming up, have your cake and eat it too with these simple tips. Yeah, our friend registered dietitian Mary Ellen Phipps. There she is, one of our favorites. She's back with some easy ways we can all cut back on the sugar in our favorite desserts. You don't want to miss this. Houston Life will be right back. From cookies to cakes and pies, you can't have dessert without some sugar, right? Uh, I don't know. I think that might be wrong. Registered dietitian Mary Ellen Phipps is dishing out low sugar recipes in her brand new book, The Easy Diabetes Desserts Cookbook. It is a beautiful book with all kinds of great recipes, and Mary Ellen is here now with five ways to cut back on the sugar. Mary Ellen, it's been so great having you on the show over the years. You've been very public about your story with type 1 diabetes, yes. and because of that, you have developed this whole new system, a way to eat for anyone who wants to cut back sugar. Right, because I think growing up, like I was, you know, you're kind of told you have to eat this, this, and this, but in reality, we now know so much about nutrition and about our bodies that we can still have delicious food and balance our blood sugars. Yeah. It looks yeah. amazing. And it smells so <laughs> yeah. good. So, so what good. did you bring for us today? Yeah. So when we're t thinking about desserts specifically and making them more blood sugar friendly, there's really, really five ways that I say that we can accomplish this. And the first one is the most obvious one. We can cut back on the sugar. So we've got two examples of that here that are both in the book. Um, some lemon squares that really all we did is just cut back on the sugar and um, okay. little cinnamon coffee cake bars over here. The lemon bars, oh, wow. I'm... I, Probably shouldn't play favorites, but those are that's probably my favorite recipe. Oh in the man, whole book. they are so so good. Yeah. And is mm. it as simple as just cutting back on the sugar? Like, what will people find in your recipes? Right. So cutting back on the sugar is one thing, and then the second thing, which is probably the thing I do most often, both in the book and on my blog on milk and honey nutrition, um, is playing up with the flours. So instead of using like all-purpose flour, what I like to do is take some sort of nut-based flour. So this is almond flour, but you can do coconut flour, other things, mm. and oats, and we grind them into a. a a flour that's got more fiber, more protein, more fat, and less carbohydrate. And so if you don't want to mess with the sugar, if you want something to be really sweet, we can we can do this way instead. And mm. so we've got like some pecan praline cookies here that we used this combination of almond flour and oats um, and little uh, praline pecans there. And then who doesn't love a funfetti birthday cake, right? It's so cute. It's yeah, because you favorite. can have your cake and eat it too. So what we've done here, the whole like naked cake, naked iced thing is very trendy right now. I feel like it has been for a year, few years. So we made a glaze here, so I thought I'd let you guys try this out. Oh yeah, um, let's do it. We've got a funfetti cake that really the only change I made is using the almond flour and the oats. Here. Okay. Um, and we take, you take the glaze there and I just, it's kind of fun to just like pour Go it for it. Oh Lisa, my God. come on, you can do Go this. Go for it. You can do it. I don't know if I want to exp So here, pick the whole thing up. Okay. I'll help you out. You Thank can scoop. Thank you. And we'll just oh, scoop it it's on. Gonna come out. Okay, and then we'll perfect. just spread it on. And nope. you get kind of like a naked ice feeling going on. And you've got a really fun Wait, birthday a cake. Naked ice feel. So where have I been? I didn't realize naked cake was a thing. Where it's just kind of that brush of icing, if you will. Oh. When I started at H E B, I wasn't from the grocery business. Yeah. So I went and worked in every department in H E B and I went to cook bake, uh, baking school. Okay. And, and how cake did that decorating. Go? Well, you can see how well I'm doing. It looks that. great. <laughs> they never put me in the. the yeah. Our photographer th for the book made it look so perfect. But we've got some candles there. You can stick them in. The perfect birthday celebration. You don't have to skimp on that when it comes to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You well, better make it pretty. On top. So the yes. idea here then, Mary Ellen, is instead of coating the entire cake with a frosting, right. you're just using less of it. Right. It can still be fun. It can still be delicious. We're just we're just going to cut back a little bit. Yeah. Good job. Here, do so, you want to put those yes. in? Yes. The next the next thing, and this is hear me out here. But I've brought desserts before, and I know it kind of weirds you out sometimes, Derek, but uh, we're going to put beans in our desserts. No, Mary so, Ellen. <laughs> ew. Okay, we sorry. her. Look how good this stuff ew. is. We, hey, you, you've had some of them, and you loved them. But we take cooked beans, so canned beans. You rinse them off. You mash them up. When you mash them up with flour, so like our combination here, you get a texture very similar to cookie dough. So I have two recipes here. We've got orange zest sugar cookies, and then some like edible, eggless, um, chocolate chip pecan okay. cookie dough. 
And so this recipe, what I love about it is, I've got some scoops here if you guys want to try it, but you just scoop it and eat it like you would ice cream. Oh, I want to try oh my it gosh. for sure. Okay. Go I for do want to try it. Cups, take a scoop and have at it. Wait, and these are like, just white beans and garbanzo beans? So that recipe is white beans mashed up, obviously with a ton of flavorings. We've got pecans and dates and chocolate chips and a little bit of maple syrup in there, stuff like that. What's the ratio? Like how oh many beans are we talking? Good? Delish. And it tastes so sweet. It's amazing. Uh, what are you thinking? I think it's good. I, are there any like, after you eat it after a while, would your tummy feel a little I mean, not, not only, there's there's one can <laughs> Thank of you for that question. Well, I'm there's one can of beans in the entire recipe, so I oh. think you're good. I think you're good. But it just adds mm. that protein and fiber component that some desserts might be lacking. And mm. so it's a good way to get that in. There's a whole lot of other intrinsic values, to, uh, nutritional values to beans that we're really looking to capitalize on. It's they a really good texture. It is a good, good <laughs> texture. I am surprised. I would never think of putting beans in cookies. I'm yeah. sold. Okay, and so then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna think about our fat source. So we know people with diabetes should watch the amount of saturated fat they eat. That's, we've known that for decades. So we can use other fat sources like nut butters and avocado and avocado oil and things like that. So we've got a low carb pumpkin bread here that mm. we're actually using almond butter as our fat source. Mm. And then we've got some, you ever had a monster cookie bar, M&Ms, chocolate chips, peanut oh, yeah. butter? We're relying on the peanut butter here for these. Um, my kids threatened me if I didn't come home with any of those, that we, uh -oh. would, we would have problems. I have to but take just a little bite of this one. <laughs> Go for it, they're delicious, and they're how like a dense, flour Fluffy. So it doesn't look like a little bite to me. Either. Sorry, that is a larger <laughs> bite. So if it, if it calls for oil, then how, like how do you know if you're going to substitute one of the nut butters for for another so in fat this source? Sense we're using it instead of butter. Instead of butter, instead of butter entirely. Of butter. Oh. Yes. So um, it, it you get the same texture. The fat is still doing the same job. Um, go for that it. is really good. good. And a lot, I'm sorry, I shut up. <laughs> People might wonder, you can't put the like M&Ms on, or you can. I mean, clearly so you have them here. So what we did here is there's a little small amount of chocolate chips throughout, and then we just put the M&Ms on top. You get the fun, you get the flavor, but we don't have to pack a ton in there throughout the whole loaf, if you will. Mmm. Okay. Yeah. Last tip. Okay. You have Last yogurt tip. over here. We're gonna go for the yogurt. So um, well, I have a couple single serve recipes in there. I know people love single serve dessert recipes. Mm -hmm. So one of them is like a microwave uh, coffee cake in a mug. And so we're using the Greek yogurt in here to get some protein in there. Um, maybe get a little bit of fat, depending on what type of yogurt um, you're using. But it really helps up that protein content. So this is just a little coffee cake in a mug. It's so cute. So, so whip fun. it up in about less than five minutes. And then we have some key lime cupcakes. And so this is this is a base of Greek yogurt and coconut flour. So you'll notice the texture is a little bit different, but the flavor we get between the lime zest, we're adding the protein and the icing, it's basically like a higher protein icing, if you will. Okay. Looks well, awesome. It looks good. And uh, Lisa, maybe your fiance Lee, you two can enjoy some key lime cakes. Listen, the new cookbook, the Easy Diabetes Desserts Cookbook, it comes out next week, June 7th. Congratulations, it's a beautiful so book. Much. And I can tell you, the beans and the cookies, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a good. delicious thing. Mary Ellen, thank you so much for stopping by. That was great. Thank you. Thanks for, for lunch. Me. And by the way, these are just some of the recipes and tips you can find in Mary Ellen's brand new cookbook. And good news, we're giving away three copies to three lucky KPRC2 insiders. If you'd like to sign up, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. I still want to have one of everything on this table. All right, coming up after the break, a look at what's happening on tomorrow's show, including another incredible grad from the class of 2022. And as we head to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier to look what's upcoming on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Kevin. Lisa and Derek tonight on ET. Amber Heard's next move after being ordered to pay Johnny Depp millions. Plus, ET's in the UK for Harry and Meghan's royal reunion. You do not want to miss it. That's tonight at 630 right here on KPRC2. Now sit tight because Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, we're in the pool. Do your kids know how to swim or maybe you still need to learn? We're going to bring you basic swimming skills and how you can sign up for free and reduced price lessons. Also, we'll meet the local high school senior on the road to becoming a play-by-play -play sportscaster. Very exciting. And some breaking news, J.J. Watt and Kalia Ojai, they just announced on Instagram they're expecting their first child. That's so wonderful. It's, Isn't that it's awesome? so great. Congratulations. Even though they don't have H-E-B to shop at. It's still, oh, well, still I'm sure good. they'll pay you a visit at <laughs> H-E-B. Hey, speaking of H-E-B, Lisa Hoffman, that was so much fun having you on the show. Thank you. I had a blast. I can't believe it just flew by. It flew by, right. And you said this is your first time ever doing something like this. Yes, first time. I mean, I've been on the other side and been interviewed, but not been on our side. Viewers would never know because you're such a natural. What'd you think? I mean, you come, you get to hang out, have snacks. 
I think this is the best job ever. So if you want to have me back, I'm here. Just let me know. Well, we would we would love to have you anytime. And I know uh, with your nonprofit Brighter Bites, you're very busy with HEB. You're very busy with your two boys. And now your engagement, you've got a lot going on. So thanks so much for making time for us. It was my pleasure. Thanks, Derek. And we have more snacks after the show. But in the meantime, that does it for us today on Houston Life. We're going to head it off to Keith and Christine over in Studio A. We have some less sugar desserts over here, friends. Hey, bring them. Hey, we're always down for you to yeah. share. You know, mm. Free snacks? Sign us up. We have yeah. cookies with beans in them, <laughs> and they're good. I love how you asked the question that everyone was thinking, Derek. <laughs> about the beans like do they give you gas <laughs> thank you for saying it again. i ask the questions people <laughs> listen you, know, know. you need to know like news that you can use someone at home wanted to know that i guarantee you. <laughs> i think so too <laughs> Great by the way today. check in with me in a couple hours and i'll let you know okay sounds good through. yep <laughs> then we'll get the real take all right buddy we'll see you later <laughs> bye